I'm Sydney Labieski, and this is Bonnie's Basketball Now. And good afternoon and welcome to Bonnie's Basketball Now. Along me, alongside me are Leah Lockwood and Allie Elkins. Let's jump into the, to today's point. It's finally here. Teams are looking good and the Riley Center is looking even better. But there's always room for improvement. The women's team need to be more aggressive offensively and defensively. They need to drive to the basket more and play more attentive defense. For the men's team to succeed, they need to have more rebounds offensively and defensively. There's a lot of missed opportunities that could make their games more high scoring. So a lot of players had different impacts in the game yesterday, fifth, especially fifth year Claire Cody who racked up 10 points including from behind the arc and down low. Allie, what do you think? I think this game was great. It was a great showcase of what this team can do. It's a very new team, obviously new coach Crowley back in the hot seat as head coach. I think they did a great job. They're developing together and they're playing together really well, especially for a new team. And who else do you think made an impact on this team? I'm really liking the way that Peyton Fields is looking out here, especially when you looked at her play style last year, she was a lot more timid and we didn't get a lot of minutes. This year she's emerging as like a key bench player in my opinion. She seems so much more confident, so much more willing to drive to the basket, so much more willing to kind of take a hit every once and then really putting her body on the line. And I love that play style. Good, yeah. I also think they, they're, blood, they're starting to blend well together, I think. Now that they have the, got two games under their belt, you know, and they're driving down low and they're looking down low, but also looking on the opposite side to behind the arc. I think everything's looking really well. And next up, we have the men's team against Canisius. So obviously this was a big game, you know, Canisius Bonaventure got that rivalry kind of going on. Allie, what are your thoughts? First of all, this Canisius team was fierce. They played against Syracuse previously before Bonaventure, and they only lost by 12 points, which is not a lot. Especially to Syracuse, yeah. Syracuse is a powerhouse basketball school. A 12-point loss is not a big deal. So... Coming into this game, they already had some momentum going. They were coming off of a good game. So they performed, and I wasn't surprised after their performance against Syracuse, honestly. Mm -hmm. I also think Charles Pride had a huge impact on this game. He did really well. Leah, what are your thoughts on Charles? I love Charles Pride on here. He's a really emerging as the team's top scorer, top leader. It seems like he could really get a bucket whenever he wants to. He just seems so confident. The way he carries himself on the court is just what they needed. And I think that he contributes to the team in such a way that everybody else feels like they can be confident and also play their best. I also think the Bonaventure team also kind of went in with a little chip on their shoulders a little bit. You know, it's Canisius, whatever. But I think they just... Canisius blew them out of the water, right, in my I opinion. I think the energy was just up there when Bonaventure was like, we got this. But. I think sometimes that when you go into a game thinking that your opponent is not maybe like lesser than you, but you know they're thinking it's a familiar rival, it's just Canisius, they might not have thought there was as much on the line for this game. So I think they kind of downplayed it a little bit, came into the game cool, relaxed, comfortable. No, that's not what you need. You can never be comfortable in this game, <laughs> as, we, as we've we seen. Um, yeah. And last year, they lost to Canisius in overtime as well. So they have to really prove themselves. I was going to say, their loss to Canisius was a big deal last year. It was a, it was actually, Canisius was leading throughout the game, and St. Bonaventure redeemed themselves in the end to actually get to that overtime. And this was, like I said before, I expected this Canisius team to have Bonaventure in their sights, and they definitely performed. No, I agree. I think they were a little bit too comfortable going into this game. But anyways, let's take a look at what's coming up. Coming up, our Ellie Elkins talks with highly anticipated transfer Danny Haskell on her relationship with Coach Crowley. This is Daryl Banks III, and this is BBN. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now.
When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I spoke to one of the newest additions to the St. Bonaventure basketball team, Kanisha's transfer, Danny Haskell, and she had a lot to say about her relationship with Coach Crowley. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Jim Crowley, women's basketball coach here at St. Bonaventure University. PC announced their new women's basketball coach today. Jim Crowley takes over the Friars, coming over from St. Bonaventure. And we're joined now by the Providence College women's basketball team head coach, Jim Crowley. Another job opening up on the women's side. Tuesday, Providence College and Jim Crowley announcing their mutually parting ways. Crowley I was missing this community. Sometimes people go back to where it all started. Um, what's it been like coming back to Bonaventure? <laughs> uh, you know, you, you, whenever you go back, I guess people think like, ah, you never know what to expect. I, I think I did know what to expect, and that's why I wanted to come back. Crowley isn't the only one coming home this season. It's just crazy to me that it's kind of like a full circle moment because I would literally come here and be like a ball girl as like a little girl. Kenesha's senior transfer, Danny Haskell, decided to finish her college basketball journey just a half an hour from where it all began. I grew up in Franklinville, which is like 30 minutes away. It's a game she plays with passion, all thanks to her father, Jeff. It's his love, basketball, and so to be able to continue that is just, it's a good feeling. I think she's changed the game here at Franklinville. I think we're going to be successful for a really long time because kids want to be like her. All the way in Franklinville, Danny's former coach, Alan Dunlap, is still cheering Danny on. So proud of her, happy for her. She deserves it. Um, I think any athlete who has uh, gotten to this level, the level that, they, they, that they're at, they've worked so hard, I think they need to be rewarded. So very, very proud. So walk me through your decision to come from Canisius to St. Bonaventure. I obviously enjoyed my first couple years at Canisius, but um, it just wasn't the place for me anymore. So I entered the transfer portal and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was always close to home. Obviously I lived like 30 minutes from Canisius and I was like, eh, I'm like older, I'm a ma more mature now. Like I can go far away if I want to. Danny feels right at home, but the crowd's reaction says it all about how the community feels. But the person who's the most thankful for Danny is the very person who's returning home as well. One of the things you always want is, is players you can trust. And I'm sure players want coaches they can trust. And um, because of our relationship, that was built in. Um, you know, so um, while the players we have have been really good at working at that, you still have to work at it. Uh, with Danny, it, we hit the... One thing's for sure. St. Bonaventure basketball holds a very special place in Danny's heart. What is your favorite thing to do around here at St. Bonaventure? <laughs> it doesn't have to be basketball. I would say it is basketball, like just being like here and like at the school, like in this gym, like it's crazy. Like I've been in this gym so many times when I was like a little kid, like my dad would play here for like a, with like a men's league. And I'd just be like on the side seeing like the other, like the college players at the time shooting on the side. I'm like, wow, like that's really cool. Like they can just come in here whenever they want and do whatever they want like here. And I was so like, just to be able to like come in this gym whenever I want and like to be a part of this is my favorite thing about it. Would you say it's surreal? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like I said earlier, like a full circle moment, so. So Allie, tell us a little bit more about maybe what we didn't see on the screen with Danny Haskell. One of the biggest things about Danny is her personality, and that's the reason she has all the wonderful relationships with all of her coaches. She's just such a great person, a great leader, and she's just, she's nice. <laughs> and that's a very important trait when you're working in a team environment. And even just speaking to her in that interview, she was just such a great person to talk to. I think she's fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. Leah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that, as you were saying, like the coaches, relationship with their players is so so important especially Crowley because he's new to this team well 
sort of. New, but yes. yes new, but Coming not. back, yeah. Same with Danny. Um, they both know what the Bonaventure culture is like, so coming back here, they know what to expect, and I think that Crowley really embodies what Danny is off the court. They kind of have the same morals and values, and Danny shows that on the court, the way that she leads the team, the way that she carries herself. It's very evident that the two of them were, it's perfect they're here at the same time again. Mm -hmm. No, it's crazy, and I'm so happy that she's here on the Bonaventure team. Maybe she'll give us like a little, little lift up, you know? But anyway, so yesterday we asked you, the fans, about your hot takes on yesterday's doubleheader. We got some answers. Some said that Danny Haskell looks unstoppable, while the others said that men really don't have an identity for their team. Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw out my hot take out here. So I think Charles Pride is what DB wants to be. Let that sink in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I feel like, you know, he's just not performing as much as he as Daryl would normally perform, where here's Charles, you know, doing everything that DB did last year. Ellie, what are your thoughts? Sid, I got to say, I was a fan right away. <laughs> when he started creating offense in the first game, I was like, this is the guy. He brings that veteran presence. He brings that player mentality that somebody who – is coming from another team who already has experience. He was a record breaker at Bryant. He's faced a lot of really great D1 schools at Bryant. Charles Pride is somebody who comes in with a lot of experience and he's shown that he can create offense on this team. Leah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with you. I think we were all a fan from the jump. Leah, as you're saying. <laughs> I think we were all a fan from the jump, and I think that Charles Pride, too, is more of a scorer on this team now. You know, as you said, he's, he brings that veteran presence, and I think there's more scorers on this team this year compared to last. So it might be a little more difficult for Daryl to find his exact presence on this team and how he fits into it, as now he might have to be a little bit more of a facilitator rather than scorer. And how do you think about the hot take of the men's don't have an identity yet? Well, right now they're bringing a lot of bits and pieces onto the team, right? Like I said, a transfer, somebody like that who is now you're having to factor into a team who already has a lot of role players like Daryl Banks, mm -hmm. who played a very different role last season. It's definitely hard to figure out the trajectory of this team right now, especially when we're not really sure what their style is. Exactly. I think they need to blend in a little bit more together, Leah. I would almost argue that no team really has an identity yet because it's so early in the season. Maybe they have a practice identity, but in games that is completely different and you don't know exactly what to expect from the team that you're facing that day. So I think that trying to figure that out right now is still normal. There's no reason why anybody needs to be freaking out right now. Daryl's not making his shots. Okay. It was the second game. We can calm down. We're moving on. He knows what Relax, happened. You know? He knows what was yeah. wrong. He knows how to fix it, we hope. And I think that they're going to figure it out. I love the we hope, but yeah. <laughs> so coming up, we got Leah's list and predictions. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. So now it's time for Leah's list. I have a few topics that I picked out for you guys. I want to bounce them off of you, see how you guys are thinking about them as well. So the first one I have is Mark Schmidt's rotation this year. Last year, we know, we didn't really have as deep of a bench as we do this year, so we saw a lot of the guys getting so many minutes and then the bench players barely anything. So this year we have some new added players in Noel Brown and Kyrell Luke is not new but he is coming off the bench this year with a new presence so I was just wondering how do you guys think that they're making their presence felt and is it helping or hurting the team coming off the bench? I think it's great that we actually have a deep bench this year because you know Chad's down low he's gonna get fouls called on him all the time that's just what happens you know it's the nature of the game mm -hmm. so the fact that he has a sub for him Noel I think it's great because then either it can go either way. If Noel's in um, foul trouble, then Chad can come in, vice versa. And I also think it's great that Kyrell has his sub too as point guard with Shuey. I think it's great, you know, if he's maybe not doing so well or performing as much, 
he'll have a sub. And then he could just take a second on the bench, come back in. Right. Allie, your thoughts? I'm going to have to agree with you there. I think it's almost a necessity for this team to have a deep bench because we've seen in the last couple games, they've gotten into foul trouble a lot. And it's going to be useful to have some guys to bring onto the court who can play those same roles at that same capacity, or at least somewhere near the same capacity as the starters. So this deep bench is going to be so important to the season's team. Agreed. I also want to talk a little bit about the women's bench. So as we see yesterday, Kira Dandridge came off the bench for the women. She had nine points and seven rebounds. And I am so glad to see that she's finding her role in this team. She's playing with confidence. I was wondering what you guys think the trajectory of the trajectory of her season is going to look like continuing. I think it's just the start. If she's already having seven rebounds coming off of the bench, I think that's great. I think both teams need to focus on rebounding, let alone <laughs> the women's. So I just think it's great that she's coming off the bench and it's like, yeah, I'm going to rebound. Yeah. So I think it's good for the team. <laughs> Leah? Not Leah. Allie? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <so. laughs> yeah, she is somebody who I'm excited to watch play this season. She is in a different spot, I think, than she ever has been before. And I think this team is looking for people who can be <coughs> consistent, and I think we're going to see that consistency from her this season. Agreed. So as we just talked about the familiar faces we've seen around here and the returners, we actually had another familiar face in the crowd last night. Dominic Welch was here, as you all right remember him from the Iron Man 2.0. Um, he was in the crowd with a pretty flashy outfit on, had a very big silver puffer coat on. I just want to know what you guys think of that. I, in my opinion, I thought it was a little too flashy. I thought, you know, you're coming back to the place you, you got your name from. I would have expected him to be in at least like Bonaventure gear, maybe some of his old merch. I just thought it's a little too flashy for the Riley Center, We're so used to the brown. But I mean, maybe if the coat was in a brown, maybe I would have liked it, but I don't you know, know. This is Don Welch we're talking about. Yeah, that is true, but it's like, come on, Bonaventure. You know, I want to see the brown, not that silver, whatever was up there. So what do you think? I'm going to have to disagree with you. <laughs> I think I'm here for the self-expression. I love it. I think he was serving a look. I think with Woj in the house, because Woj was in the house, you got to flex the silver jacket. I think it was a style. I think it was the moment. I was fully entertained. And we're sitting here talking about it right now. So it works. Maybe Loki he got what yeah, he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure Woj did not miss that in the crowd. Probably <laughs> not, no. All right, so we're going to segue into a very important topic here. What the heck is going on with Daryl Banks? What do you guys think is going on? Like, It's just not good. <laughs> it's not good. Sid. Well, yeah, but. <laughs> I think that he's struggling to play a role on a team where now we're seeing some more people step up. We're seeing people like Charles Pride step up on this team. We're seeing a lot of other people who we haven't seen before step up. And he's struggling to fit into a role because he doesn't have to be that guy anymore. He doesn't have to be the only guy who creates offense. He doesn't have to be the player of the game all the time. And so that's probably a mental adjustment for him. I agree there with you, Leah. I agree. I think that he probably is so used to having to be that guy for the team that it's difficult to make the adjustment that he doesn't need to score every drive, every possession. There's other guys that can do that for him and help take the load off. And I think that it's okay if he is a facilitator. I think, I think it's just something that fans need to get used to and seeing that and not expecting everything to fall on Daryl. No, I 100% agree with you. So. There's this thing of the hype effect, you know? He had a lot of hype coming in last year. He was new from St. Peter's. They went to the Sweet 16 and on so and forth. Do you think that him not having as much hype as last year is affecting how he's playing? I think that there's a little bit less pressure than there was last year, only because last year was his first year here. Everybody was expecting something huge from him. That's a lot of pressure, and maybe he didn't rise to the occasion as much as everybody thought last year either. But this year, there's a little bit less pressure, though it might not feel like it for him because he's so used to being that guy. But there is less pressure because there's other scorers around him, and they can help share the load. Ellie, your thoughts? I think that there's a little bit more pressure for him to fit into a role now. I think that it's difficult now having other people with experience who are now looking at your style of game. And I think maybe he's feeling the pressure from himself right now. And now that he's had a few tough games, probably from the fans as well. So he's probably in a tough position right now. No, I agree with you. So anyways, onto a better topic. The women play the U Albany this 
Thursday at 7 p.m. in the Riley Center. Leah, what are your predictions for this game? I think they're going to win. I think they're off to a really good start this season. I mean, we're not going to really talk about the Niagara game because that wasn't great. <laughs> and I know they're missing a couple players right now again, but having Danny Haskell back, I think that she is a great leader for this team, as we've talked about. And I think that they have a lot of momentum going into that game, a lot of confidence built up, and obviously we're at home still, so I think that's going to be a great game. Hey, Ailey? I also think they're going to win. we got to remember this team is almost a clean slate. We're seeing so many new role players, not to mention Coach Crowley, who's had a lot of success with this Bonaventure team in the past. I think that he, as well as the players on the team, are developing together, and I think the more games they play together, it's just going to get better from here. I'm expecting a win fully from them. Not to mention, Coach Crowley actually was wearing a suit in their win yesterday. I know he he's actually a little bit superstitious, if you guys didn't know that. So when he wears a suit, they win. So I guess we'll see what he is bringing to the court on Thursday. I mean, I might have to disagree with you guys. Oh. I think that, I know, I think they just need a little bit more time to blend a little bit. And, you know, with Danny being back, that's great. But I think she also needs to blend more with the team, too. Not everything can be the Danny Haskell show, you know. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the loss on this for them. But I'm hope, I, I hope they prove me wrong. I really do. Because, you know, go Bonnies. But now we got the, men he the men's head to a familiar spot, the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. They begin the Legends Classic. And their first game is Thursday against Oklahoma State at 6.30. Ellie, what are your predictions for this game? I think this game is going to be lost, Sid. I think this team is having a tough time meshing together. I'm not seeing a lot of cohesive play. I'm not seeing a lot of ball movement. They're not creating a lot of offense without the help of the veteran players. It just looks difficult for them right now. They're having a lot of turnovers. They just aren't playing together. It's very sloppy. And I think we need to see some improvement from them before they get a lot of wins under their belt. I agree with you, Leah. I think it's also going to be a loss, but I do think it's going to be a close game because as we've seen, when the Bonnies play in tournaments like this, like last year we saw like the Gotham Classic, everybody thought they were going to lose. Well, they actually won that game. So <laughs> I think it's going to be kind of the same thing going into that. You know, everybody's expecting kind of a disappointing outcome, and I think that they're going to keep it really close. Ultimately, I do think they're going to lose because Oklahoma State has some veteran players in Bryce Thompson and Mike Marsh. I think that Mike Marsh and Chad Benning are really going to battle it out down low, so that's something we're going to have to keep an eye out for, and Bryce Thompson will shoot the three a lot, so I think that that's also going to contribute to a win, but not by much for Oklahoma State. I know. I'm going to have to agree with you both. I think they're also going to take the L on this one. Again, I hope they prove us wrong. I really hope they do, but they're playing Oklahoma State. Yes, they're in the bottom of their division, but it's the Big 12. You know, they're playing a lot better schools, you know, bigger not schools the with the, yeah, they're yeah. not in A10. So again, I hope they do prove me wrong, but you know, whatever happens, happens at the end of the day. But keep a lookout for our Jalen Valdez, who will be putting out content this week about it. So anyways, I think that's a close for the show. That's all we got for you today. I know there was a lot, so we're good. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great week.